But behind closed doors, I'm a fool for your love. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. We have a pretty impromptu video today. This is completely out of the blue. I just decided to do this actually this morning. So. What I want to talk about today is because finals week is coming up and I actually got this suggestion to do a video, this exact video, from a friend of mine who is going through finals week. She's actually starting to do a little cut, she's doing a little low carb and she's just like, you should just do it like a, your top five snacks that we can bring while we're studying for finals and that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm also going to be kind of talking about something so because today is my refeed day or cheat day or act like a big fat ass day, whatever you want to call it. It's our cheat day and stuff like that. So there's something I want to talk to in regard to that. But let's get to the fun part of the video. Well, it's all fun for me. But let's get to the part of the video where we're just kind of talking about my top five snacks. And number one, I'm going with jerky. And specifically Duke's jerky. This Duke's it has the best macros I've ever found. I Every time I go to the store, I look at the beef jerky, your standard beef jerky. And it, it's always decent protein. It's always decent fat. But it's always something like it has like 5 to 7 grams of sugar. Anything above 2 grams of sugar per serving, I'm not even going to touch. There's absolutely no reason to have that much sugar in the ground beef and these, um, in the jerky. I have no idea where they're putting this sugar either because it is like... Salt and pepper beef jerky with seven grams of sugar and I'm just like where the hell is the sugar in this like it should be dried beef Salt and pepper like I don't know where you put sugar in that but Rant aside the macros on this 10 fat 7 protein 1 gram of carbs. You've seen me talk about these before um, To have one only one gram of sugar and that's your only carb You can essentially eat six of these just studying for finals or just kind of hanging out I absolutely love these jerky or these um hot and spicy dukes they have like eight to ten flavors of them, so you can find, you know, three or four of them that you can just absolutely go in. Next, and what we have here is in my little freezer bag, because this is in my refrigerator, is pepperoni. So, pepperoni can be a little tricky. This pepperoni has 12 grams of fat, five grams of carb, or five grams of protein, and zero carbs. Now. It's also higher in sodium, which is good though, because you want some sodium when you're on a ketogenic diet. Uh, most pepperoni I find to have around 12 to 14 grams of fat, and a lot of it's going to have in between 5 and 7 grams of protein. We get this private selection old world, pep old world pepperoni because it has zero carb. Now, there are a lot of kind of generic pepperonis out on the market that have one or two carbs. Go out of your way, spend a few extra minutes, and go find the one that has zero carbs. You're going to be able to keep your carbs lower, and there's really no reason to go out of your way to get stuff that is less good for you on this kind of a diet. Pepperoni, though, absolutely amazing. I like to pair it with cheese, cheese sticks, or even um, wrapped pepperoni around some nuts. And to talk about cheese, we have this. So cheese, next one of my favorite snacks on the ketogenic diet. Also one of my favorite things to experiment with because cheese is like one of those things, it's almost like, I know you've seen the Instagrammers on um, Powered by Ice Cream, people like that who they, they go out of their way to try new ice creams. They'll drive 40 minutes to get the new flavor of ice cream. Well, I do the same thing with cheese. And I've been kind of experimenting with different cheeses for a while now. I recently fell in love with this Bella Vitano that's kind of, um, I guess it's a kind of cheese, you know, like Gouda or cheddar. I really like this Bella Vitano. It's a very strong flavored cheese. I don't need to go into the whole, like, cheese tasting thing. But I've been going and trying a lot of these. This one has zero carbs. It has 10 grams of fat and 7 grams of protein. Things with cheeses, they're usually more um, fats than proteins, but they are somewhat high on protein. You just got to watch your serving sizes and watch how much you're eating. Cheese sticks, cheese cubes, those little baby bell cheese circles, all of that is great stuff. Pack one, two ounces of cheese, pack a few servings of pepperoni, and you've got an amazing snack. Or just pack three cheese sticks or whatever you want. I just find cheese, it's another snack that's usually under one carb, if not zero carbs at most time. This, I, I got another brand of this one. This one's like Merlot Bella Vitano. I got another one that's a different flavor and it has like two carbs per one ounce, which is a little one. Oh, it's a Chipotle one. 
So depending on which brand or what kind of flavoring of cheese you get, you could have one to two carbs, but 90% of the time it's gonna be really low carb and you're just, I love it. I mean, who doesn't love cheese really though? Next, Old Faithful. You've seen me talk about these before, pork rinds. So pork rinds, I didn't really didn't know what they were made of, but they're, it's gross to hear what they're made of, but they're still delicious. And this is another snack that, this one is the only one of my snacks that I'll eat that actually has more protein than fats. Um, I usually have about two servings of this just because one serving of pork rinds is very, very minimal. It's half an ounce. But five grams of total fat and nine grams of total protein and you have zero carbs. Now, with pork rinds you have to watch two things. One, you have to watch sugars on your flavors. Pork rinds, they come in barbecue, they come in hot and spicy, they come in salt and pepper. We found um, um, salt and vinegar pork rinds. So th they can come in a ton of different flavors and you just have to watch on how many carbs are in each one of them because some of the flavors will have artificial sugars, they'll have some sweeteners in them and you just have to watch that. We usually just go with the original pork rinds just to avoid that. But this is another great snack. It's almost like chips. You just pack an ounce, maybe two ounces, depending on how much you've eaten that day, how long you're going to spend in the library, or how long you're going to pretend to study for. Pack them. It's a great little chip snack. Um, yeah, there's not really much to say about that. And then finally, probably my favorite thing, nuts. So I absolutely love nuts. And I especially these flavored nuts. Like if you get flavored nuts, it's actually, it's absolutely fantastic. My favorite are these Maori onion and garlic. I like to just kind of put them in my mouth and I like to like suck the flavor off the nuts. That's how my favorite way to eat them is. On a total serious note though, I actually love these flavored nuts. I don't want to talk with my mouth full, but I absolutely love these flavored nuts. I get these ones specifically at Market District. Um, if you guys have a giant eagle in your area, you should be able to get these. Whole Foods, I'm sure, sells a good selection of nuts as well. I usually get this Maui onion and garlic, or I'll get some some of the um, honey butter macadamia nuts. I also get some rosemary and salt, or rosemary and salt and pepper, or something like that. Marcona almonds, black um, black truffle Marcona almonds. Just any kind of nuts, macadamia nuts, marcona almonds, regular almonds, pecans, walnuts, all perfectly fine. You just have to watch um, your proteins and your carbs. Macadamia nuts are probably the lowest on protein, but marcona almonds and pecans are probably the lowest on carbs. So pecans are usually about 20 fats to like 5 protein to about 1 gram to 2 grams of net carbs. Marcona almonds are about 17 fats. There's about seven grams of protein. And it's about one gram of net carb. Macadamia nuts, you're gonna have the most fat out of any nut. You're gonna have about 24 to 25 grams of fat. You're gonna have only two grams of protein. Like I said, they're the lowest protein dense nut. But you're also gonna have about three grams of net carbs, depending on where, th two to three grams of net carbs per serving of macadamia nuts. So just depending on which nut is your favorite, you can really get any of them, you can't really go wrong. Also, I love getting a serving of those, serving a pepperoni, and eating a piece of pepperoni with a, one of the nuts. I think it's a great combination. Now, get into the next part of the video. And you might be asking, Max, why are you opening a dark chocolate raspberry Ghirardelli chocolate bar that has 25 grams of carbs per serving, with 21 of that being sugar, and you're saying, Max, you're on a ketogenic diet. I know this is your cheat day, but why would you be doing this? Or like, why do this on a cheat day? And why even have cheat, why, why have unhealthy cheat days, really? Because so many people advocate against it. Or you could be just sitting at your desk saying, you know, get to your content. I don't care about your witty banter or your attempt at witty banter. And to those people who are saying that, I say, you know, you're gonna have to sit here and hear the funny things I have to say or attempt to be funny. But essentially, I kind of came to the... Wow. Mmm. Look at that filling. I need to start doing food, food reviews, but... 
The reasoning behind this is I had a, rev a revelation a few weeks ago, and I think it was three weeks ago, I hit my all-time low of 182 pounds. And when I did that, I something switched in my head saying, if you lose five more pounds, you'll look like this. Or if you lose five, pound, five more pounds, you'll look like one of these two guys. Or you'll look like this guy. And it was just kind of this unrealistic expectation that because I was at my all-time low weight that within a few weeks I was going to have abs or that with in a few weeks I was going to look like one of the models or one of the Instagrammers that I kind of follow and with being into fitness so much as I am and I've been attempting to get in shape for a few years I did started like senior year of high school as you guys know or if you guys are new I started like senior year of high school I was lifting crappily I wasn't really doing it right I wasn't following any routine I wasn't following a right diet. Freshman year, I started to get my kind of my butt in shape, but even then, I wasn't really eating right or I wasn't really lifting right. I was still kind of doing a whole body workout every day. And then sophomore year, I finally got it in shape when I did the training on Instagram training. Some guy on Instagram, I did a training session with him. That's when I really got it, but I've been doing this for a few years and it's been a struggle to see all these before and afters of all these Instagrammers like, oh, I did this in like two years and I have abs now. And it's like, come on, like, come on in. So that's where I kind of was. I got down to 182. I thought, wow, if I just one more week, five more days of just really tra tough training, really strict diet, and I'm going to be there. I'm going to have my goal. I'm going to hit it. And then I can just do whatever I want. But I, I came to realize a few weeks later when I didn't do that, where I, the next day I was back to 183, or then 184, and then I was back to 182, that this is a process, and it's not something that I can do within like four or five days. This is not something that I'm going to be able to do and just say, hey, you know, if I do re something really hard this week, then I'm going to see all my abs come in. I'm going to see that six pack. No, it's something that, it's going to take years. It is going to take three to five years or four years to get to that physique that I really want, and you can say that doing a cheat day like once or twice once every two weeks or once a week that it's like oh you're you're going off your goal or it's easy to get down on yourself for doing something like that but I'm 21 years old I'm going into my senior year of college I don't drink I've barely gone out I haven't been to a fraternity I haven't been to a party since freshman year first week I went to a few parties and then since then I haven't ever been back so I work every weekend, I'm doing this, I'm going, I'm doing, getting good grades in college, and it's still, I find myself getting down on myself, like, oh, you could be, you know, you, you should get the physique you want, but you should restrict yourself and eat really strict, and you'll eventually get that physique faster, but at the same time, I've kind of come to the realization that you need to enjoy yourself, and there's this balance, this un, this un kind of told balance that a lot of people talk about. And everyone says you need balance, you need to have your cheat, and you need to eat right, and there's a balance in your life, and if you don't have that balance, you're never going to succeed. But it 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 didn't really hit me until I, it happened in my life of, I tried to take another week and say, I'm going to skip this cheat, and I'm not going to do this, I'm going to kind of just go really hard, and I hit a point where I was like, this is not fun, and that's kind of the point of what I want to make, is that you got to enjoy yourself, especially at ages like this. If you're in your 20s, or early teen or late teens, or even if you're in your mid-twenties, I mean, we're still young. We're young enough to the point where most of the people my age, they're eating Chick-fil-A five times a week, or they're eating Burger King on willy-nilly. They're not working out. I am worlds ahead of where most people are at my age, and I'm still that hard on myself for whatever reason. So the reason I'm doing this, and I've started having these bigger, whatever I really want, cheat days every two weeks is... I still want to hit that goal that I set out for a month ago, two years ago, whatever that goal was, and I've set a few of them. I still want to hit it, but I want to enjoy the ride, and that's something I kind of lost a few weeks, or a few, like, I lost that kind of enjoyment of enjoying the ride for a few months, where I was so focused on, if I do this right, then I'm not gonna, I can just get it done, and then I'll have my goal, and then I can just work for it forward toward that but I never now that I'm kind of here I realize that it's going to be a few years it's maybe two years maybe three years I'll have it but it's going to be 
consistent work over an extended period of time. It's not going to be that if I just get one more weekend then I'm going to have this goal. It's going to be something that I have to work for for a long, long time. And I'm ready for that. It's something I'm excited about. I can't wait to see what the results are three years down the line. But the the what I want to get out of this video is just enjoy yourself. So if you're sitting at home and you're like, oh, I want to stay on this diet but my friends are going to Cedar Point or they're going on vacation and I don't want to go because I don't want to cheat. I want to keep on my goal. Just, just enjoy yourself. Enjoy life while you can. We are here for such a short time and we only get to do so many things and once you graduate college, once you get out of school, you're going to be working nine to fives, five days a week. People are going to have kids and at that point it's like enjoy yourself while you can. Enjoy yourself while you're young. I'm trying to schedule a cruise for this summer if I don't get an internship. I really want to take what I can out of being this free with my time. I consider myself to be relatively busy with work and with school and with maybe an internship and all this. But at the same time, once I get into the real world, I'm going to have even less time. So enjoy the life while you can, guys. Eat whatever you want when you're having your cheat days. Cheat. Splurge. As long as you stay on track for the majority of the time, as long as you focus for yourself and focus for three years or four years, at least you're, as long as you're working toward your goal for most of the time or the majority of the time, you will eventually get there. And as far as it goes, enjoy yourself for the entire ride. As long as you're having fun, it's good. I think that rant made sense or that little like one-on-one. -on -one. I have no idea if that was coherent or not. <laughs> I tried to make it as coherent as possible. As I said, this video was totally off the top of my head, totally on a whim, and I I planned none of this. So I excuse me if I rambled for way too damn long because it's something I like to do. But thanks for watching the video, guys. If you have any other suggestions, as always, please leave them in the comments section below. Like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you haven't already. And as always, stay achieving.